what is emergent storytelling? Simply put, it's the laziest way to add story and characters to a game, because it requires no actual storytelling from the part of the developer. And yet, all too often, emergent storytelling creates a much deeper link between the player and the story and the characters, mostly because they all live in his head. So what is it? Picture this. You have a game based entirely on mechanics, on gameplay. No dialogue, no characters, just gameplay. And it doesn't even have to be that great a gameplay, just attractive enough to entice the player to move forward, like Skyrim. In that gameplay you need to have actors, characters that, again, don't need to have dialogue, don't need to have basically anything, but they need to have something. Something that makes them identifiable, like a name, a color, a noise they make, something that makes them them. Or more precisely, something that makes the player think that these are characters and not just something random drudged up by the code. Because there's no story whatsoever in the game, the player then needs to build it in his head. We are sort of programmed as human beings to make stories out of everything. To see patterns, to give personality to something, to give life to something, to have something become a person. Like Tom Hanks had Wilson in Castaway. It's part of our basic human nature. So when you have a character that, I don't know, misses a lot by sheer random chance, that character becomes, in the player's head, shooting McMiss a lot. And if you let him change the name, then that's what he is. For the player, he can even go on a character arc, meaning he starts from a low point where he just misses a lot and then evolves, gets better and then redeems himself, becomes a hero, stops missing a lot, mostly because you got better gear or the random number generator finally stopped screwing with you. Again, there's absolutely no story there from a written standpoint. The developer didn't say, at this point, shooty McMiss a lot will hit and redeem himself. No, it's something that just happened. And to you, to the player, it becomes a story. That's emergent storytelling. It's that gap we fill automatically in a game to create our own story. A great example of this is probably the new XCOM game, mostly because I keep hearing about this feature, so to speak, constantly. That it creates these war stories and you get attached to your characters so much and it's so sad to see them die and suffer and get kidnapped and so on. Yes, it is. But again, it's not a new feature. It was implemented way back in basically the first game to have any sort of random chance in it with player controlled characters so any board game and certainly every predecessor that XCOM had like Laser Squad and Rebel Star Raiders and something like that. And yet I keep seeing articles how this game made me care about my cannon fodder, my random NPCs, how this game is an innovation. It's not. It's just the absence of a story. And one that's not done actually that well. Well, it's done better in XCOM 2, but not in the first one, because the first one had the tendency to force story upon you. It tried to have the whole emergent storytelling thing, but it kept forcing bits on you. It forced scenes, it forced decisions, it forced characters, it forced a lot of things and basically didn't work that well. XCOM 2, on the other hand, has less of that. It forces you a lot less to do things. It doesn't try that much to create a scene by itself to direct it. It lets it happen on its own. It would really help if the game mechanics weren't all too often broken to the point of being unplayable, but it does a better job. And especially it does a better job at making the characters yours. Because something that really entices you to think that those characters are actually characters and not just random models is the ability to customize them, to make them actually your own. And XCOM 2 has that in spades. They're even launching more DLC to customize your characters, more hairstyles, more clothes, getting to the point where you realize that what emergent storytelling really needs is to put actual gameplay, I mean gameplay that doesn't revolve around social activities in The Sims. Because The Sims is the holy grail of emergent storytelling. It is phenomenally successful just because it lets you have your own adventure the way you want it. You can live another life, you can live many lives in any condition you'd want them. You can be a vampire if you paid for all the DLC, you can 
travel the world. Well, actually, you can't. You just go to a few screens and that's it. They even had the medieval sims, which, uh, for some reason, they didn't make the dragon expansion for that one. They made it for The Sims 3 because, honestly, The Sims Medieval had gameplay. It was probably the best sims ever made, at least in terms of actually having you do something in it. Something other than hosting barbecues and pretending you have a job. Though they did add the job component in the sense of you actually go to your work and do something there actively in Sims 4 in an expansion. And it's not just games like The Sims, games where you have these named characters, where you customize them in detail. To me, it happens in strategy games as well, grand strategy games. And I don't mean Crusader Kings 2, which is again a game based entirely around emergent storytelling. Most paradox games are just that, strategy games on a grand scale where you control very often an individual individual character through which you tell a story. You tell it. Your decisions make that story. And it's fantastic. I mean, Crusader Kings 2 is a great game and a well-selling game. But for me, that effect also showed up in games like Rome Total War, where the units of soldiers started becoming like actual characters because they could level up, because they could improve, because they weren't exactly the same for the entire time. Which is why you probably probably won't get attached to your zerglings in Starcraft, but you will get attached to that tank that just got the rank to elite and is ready to kick some ass in Red Alert 2. And when he blows up because you didn't have anti-air defenses, it's a tragedy. Some strategy games actually had that as a mechanic. If a unit gained enough experience, you could take it with you from one mission to another. And it even gave that unit a name. And when it died, you had a grave where you could see it, where you could see its name and the name of every unit with a name that you got killed, that you took from one mission to another and another and another and at some point you failed them you let them die you monster that's one of the reasons why i like warlords battlecry because it took the concept of emergent storytelling and did something with it something small but with an impact in the long run it's also nice when games actually have a sort of narrative built into them or parts of several narratives which you explore and connect end to end again with random chances like the Mountain Blade series. There's absolutely no scripted events in that game and yet I got the feeling that the story had plot twists in it. The story that I was making up in my head because of certain random chances that would happen. For example, I helped an exiled queen in Warband to reclaim her throne and I was hoping to get my own castle for it and for a time it seemed like I would but then she decided not to. She gave it to a general which I had captured previously from the enemy and I got it into my head that he was turning her against me. Which is insane because it was all just based upon random numbers and maybe a bug in the statistics. But it happened and it made for a good story. Because the only story that existed was the one in my head. The one I wanted to play. The one where I was me in this land going on these adventures and never having someone call me at any point the chosen one, the pathfinder, the shepherd, the grey warden or whatever Byward names his character now. That always bugged me. In a lot of games, even those that claim to let you have your own story, you're always the something. Now, I get it when it happens in The Witcher because you're playing as Geralt who is an actual person, well, fictional person, but when Byward does it, it's a bit strange because I create every other bit of that character except for who I am. I can't be who I am, who I want to be, I have to be who they want me to be because they have a story in mind for me even though I'm allowed to do whatever I want in that story. Harkening back to Baldur's Gate, you also had these elements of emergent storytelling because the combat was based on random chance and people would die because they would miss a roll, the enemy critted. And if you didn't have a priest nearby or if you played on higher difficulties, a disintegrate was ultimate death for a character. But not you. For you it was game over and you had to load the save. Which is why kinda Icewind Dale did the emergent storytelling thing better with D&D. Because, let's face it, if you want real emergent storytelling, you cannot beat an actual RPG. Because the Game Master is right there with you, making up a story as you go along. And you making up the story as well. Games aren't yet at that point, but 
left again with stuff like Warband, The Sims even, and XCOM in its own way, we're getting close. And I'd surely like to see more games have emergent storytelling because, well, some of them have really awful characters and awful storytelling. You may as well leave it all to the player because sometimes the imagination of the player is better than what story you had in mind. Or at least better for that particular player because every player will have their own story. One that's unique to that player. That's the best story that player could come up with to explain whatever happened in the game. And now you know what emergent storytelling is. Basically the laziest way you can add story to a game. Stop saying it's an innovation, it's a void you fill with your mind. It's the lack of content. But it has its benefits. If you enjoyed this show, hit the like button, subscribe and share it with your friends. Or, if you thought it was horrible, then share it with your enemies and make them suffer. We shall be your weapon of vengeance. But if you liked what you saw, you could, I don't know, maybe donate because basically YouTube is horrible at revenue by using the link in the description or just buy my book. It's a fantasy book about, well, a lot of stuff. I guarantee it won't suck, and if it does suck, you can find me here and complain about it. Unlike some game developers, Ubisoft, I'll actually listen to your feedback.